story of 1960, the continuing story of that hard-nosed football tradition at Iowa State. Part of that tradition is the sign that hangs over the locker room door. The coaching staff, headed by Clay Stapleton, began work in late August toward building another winning season. They worked over plays on the blackboard, and first assistant coach Lou McCullough, coaches Bernie Miller, Art Steele, Ernie Zwallen, Vernon Gale, and Dick Corrick all contributed to the plans for the 10 games ahead. Scouting on Drake was by film, and the coaches and players felt they were ready. This was the 60th game in a series dating back to 1898 at Clyde Williams Field. For the opening day game with Drake, the crowd was the biggest in history. It seemed no one, not even the youngest fans, wanted to miss any of the action at Iowa State. Bruno Marchetti managed to pick up two yards for Drake, setting the stage to surprise the Cyclones. The surprise, a quick kick. Caught no one napping as burly Larry Vander Hayden knocked the ball down and ran it to the four yard line for the Cyclones. <laughs> Iowa State wasted little time and gave the ball to Dave Hopman who whipped around right in for the score. <laughs> Iowa State was not a gracious host in this 46 to nothing victory and tipped Mackey for a 10-yard loss to demonstrate its relentless defense. That forced the Bulldogs into another kicking situation, and this time Vickery kicked the ball dead on the Drake 47-yard line. Clay Stapleton had Hopman on the sidelines for instruction and sent him back into action with a touchdown play for the Cyclones. Hopman maneuvered his way into the end zone. But he had stepped out of bounds on the 27-yard line. Hopman picked up 17 more yards for the Cyclones. Stapleton and Lou McCullough kept an eye on the action but the Cyclones had the situation well under control. Hopman dropped into passing position and hit Mickey Fitzgerald for the third score of the day to give Iowa State a 21 to nothing lead. Action had now moved to the third quarter. Hopman once more had the ball and this young sophomore worked his way downfield for 19 yards. Tom Watkins took care of the drive with another of his brilliant scoring jumps. With the help of crisp blocking by Cliff Rick, he covered the 40 yards to make the score 27 to nothing. No one was worried about an upset now, so even before the game ended, the traveling victory bell started to ring. Action was fast and frequent as the Cyclones defeated Detroit 44 to 21. Hopman picked up a couple of yards to get the first drive underway. Mickey Fitzgerald took a reverse handoff and moved to the Iowa State 49-yard line. Then Dave Hopman dropped back and threw to Don Webb, all big eight in. Webb evaded the defenders and then outran all other pursuers for a 51-yard scoring play. Detroit had the ball long enough to run three plays. On third down, Post could make only two yards. So, Bob Marshall punted to Hopman on the Iowa State 32. Hopman moved the ball back to the Cyclone 44 and later picked up enough yardage to cross the midfield strike. On a beautifully executed naked reverse, Hopman made his way for 49 yards in a score that gave the Cyclones a 14-7 lead.
Watkins kicked off and Detroit's Karpowitz took the kickoff and worked his way upfield for a long game. Only to be tackled by Cyclone Don Webb. The ball was jarred loose. Webb recovered the fumble and took no chances of overlooking an attempt to score. But the ball was dead at the recovery spot, the Detroit 32. Hopman took charge again and collected 15 yards on a try at left end. The fine sophomore back then hit right tackle on a slant for nine more yards. This put the ball on the six-yard line as the third quarter ended with Iowa State leading 28 to 21. That was quickly changed as Hopman fought his way into the end zone for another score. But it was a team victory too as Hopman passed to Mickey Fitzgerald for a two-point conversion to give Iowa State a decisive lead. There's no sweeter victory for a Cyclone than a victory over Nebraska. Nebraska was leading 7 to nothing in the third quarter. Thunder Thornton hit the Iowa State tackle spot for seven yards. Thornton got two more on a power slant. Then Nebraska tried to pass, and Mickey Fitzgerald moved in on Pat Fisher's effort and ran it back 14 yards to the Nebraska 20. Tom Watkins, who whipped Nebraska a year ago with some brilliant running, did it all over again. It was an impossible run, but Watkins made the impossible a specialty as he bounced off every tackle and raced into the end zone with a big six-pointer. Cliff Rick converted, and the score was tied 7-7. For the fourth and one at the Iowa State 44, Nebraska's Meade elected to go for the first down rather than kick. Cliff Rick shot the gap and pinned Meade for a yard loss, and the Cyclones had the ball on their own 45. Watkins and Hopman went back into action. Tom moved the ball for 15 yards on another brilliant run. On a slant, Watkins got four more to move the ball to the Nebraska 34. Hopman had his turn and got 11 yards and a first down. Hopman got another six for the Cyclones, but the drive stopped with a fourth down situation on the Nebraska 23. Larry Schreiber came in and from the 30 and a half yard line just eased the ball over the crossbar. And that made it 10 to 7. another tough team was in Ames for action against the Cyclones. Iowa State wanted this one badly. The Cyclones were undefeated and only a week before the Jayhawks had played the number one Syracuse to a close 14 to 7 loss. A win today would keep that record clear and would certainly boost Cyclone stock nationally for this Kansas team was now number six in the nation. It was a perfect day for football and there was action to satisfy every fan. With Kansas leading 14 to nothing, the Cyclones swung into action. Mickey Fitzgerald ran the inside reverse for four yards. He came right back with another reverse and five more. Dave Clayberg hit right guard for another four. Clayberg on a fake reverse came around left end for eight yards, leaving empty-handed tacklers in his wake. He tried the left end spot again and gained five more. Watkins with the ball on the one did his best and went in for the score to make it 14 to six. Frank Pearsall's band entertained the crowd while the teams rested at the half. It was back to action for the players as KU kicked to Tom Watkins. With the fans calling for one play all the way, Watkins was doing his best to oblige, but his two had ideas about the game and finally halted the brilliant fullback at the 47-yard strike. Watkins picked up three over right guard, and Jack Mitchell, the fine young Kansas coach, was concerned about how his KU team was going to contain the Cyclones. 
John Cooper, a junior tailback, hit Mickey Fitzgerald on a pass for a five-yard gain. Then Watkins made the crowd stand up and cheer with an 18-yard right-end run that brought the ball to the Kansas 22-yard line. His running from the tailback spot, a surprise move by Coach Clay Stapleton, was outstanding, just as it was from the fullback position. Watkins got two more, this time at left end. Paul Sullivan, a fine passing fullback, dropped one in for Dwayne Marcellus. The 17-yard gain put the ball on the Kansas six. Watkins rammed in for the touchdown on the next play and was momentarily stunned by a Kansas tackler. Mickey Fitzgerald, a wingback for three years, moved into the tailback spot for a two-point conversion and showed that he, too, could be a versatile performer. But Kansas won, and the hard-nosed youngsters had lost their first game after winning three in a row. This was homecoming. A record crowd filed into the stadium, hoping to see the Cyclones in a repeat of the 27-0 win over the Buffs of a year ago. They were also on hand to have a look at the homecoming queen candidates. They were Nancy Starbuck, Joyce Rice, and Judy Healy. And Joyce was busy that day. She was homecoming queen, and she also made a regular halftime baton twirling appearance. The band gave a great performance. Frank Pearsall's marching band has a well-deserved national reputation, one it earns anew every time it performs. The Cyclones trailing by a 14 to nothing score at the half returned to the field of action and got their final instructions as the second half was ready to start. Action started with Colorado in control and moving goalward. The crowd is pulling for the Cyclones to stop that drive and get another one going in the other direction. Teddy Woods got three before Don Webb could stop him. Again the crowd called for renewed action by the Cyclones, a sentiment echoed by the Cyclone bench. We say rugged buff fullback hit over left tackle to pick up a couple before Carl Proto called a halt to his progress. Weiss came right back for four more, this time at left guard. Frank Montera filling in for injured Gail Widener completed his only pass of the day, hitting Rife for 11 yards. J.W. Burden pulled him down. Once more, the old cry of hold that line rang out. The handoff from Montera was to Frank Fink. The collision there flipped the ball into the hands of Tom Watkins. With a fine block from the referee, Tom was away for a 62-yard touchdown run. And that let the Cyclones salvage a little from a 21-6 homecoming loss. But their personal loss was to be greater. That sign no longer belonged to the Cyclones, and down it came. <laughs>